Time for the 49ers Rush Podcast. Welcome to another edition of the 49ers Roster Countdown. We're at number 47, started at 90, almost halfway through. We've got a new addition, free agent, defensive end, Kamoko Ture. This is... It's interesting because I think in retrospect, if the 49ers knew that, you know, Drake Jackson would fall in their lap at pick 61, would they make this signing? Um, I don't know, but this has been one of the key kind of roster construction philosophies of John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan before the draft is we plug every hole, plug every single hole in free agency right before the draft. So you're not dependent or forced to go after a certain position. And if you overload at a premium position, like what we just saw with defensive end, that's okay. Uh, allow it to filter itself out again. And when we look at who Kamoko Ture is, it's, it's, this dude needs a biopic. Let's just be honest. Uh, you know, immigrating from Western Africa at three years old, not playing football till you know the end of his junior year in high school. Didn't even start the season his junior year. Never played football till you know halfway through his high school career, and one year later is leading the state in sacks and all these other things. So uh, let's let's dive in. Jersey number 53, Bowman's number, uh, does hurt to see that, but I get it. Uh, you can't retire every number, but man, I love me some Bowman. Um, six foot five, 253. He's big. He doesn't play as big. That's not really his strength. Whenever I watched his film, and I'll be sharing with you my pre-draft uh, <laughs> write-up uh, way back whenever he was drafted. He's in his fifth season, but we've been doing these you know, draft write-ups and all that stuff for so long. We, we can go back and look at that. He's 26 years old. He played in Barringer High School, Newark, New Jersey, right, man, right smack dab in the middle of Newark, the fighting blue bears of Barringer. Um, he was a three-star recruit, went to Rutgers, information technology and info, uh, sorry, informatics major. So dude's got some intelligence and it doesn't take long at all to kind of realize where it comes from. A family immigrated from Guinea. Um, when he was three years old, didn't play until his junior year in high school. And again, didn't even start, you know, did go through the off season, like literally joined the team in the middle of the year. He was a three sport athlete in school, basketball, football, track and field. And, you know, the blue bears were good. He led them to their very first playoff game in 26 years, um, was a track and field champ in triple jump and high and long jump as a junior in high school. He's explosive. So you're talking about somebody at 6'5", 250, winning state <laughs> and triple jump and long jump. This dude, athleticism for days. Um, and his body was able to support the weight, and he's still able to keep his speed. He's got a great get off. Now, as I said, his junior year, he joined the team. His senior year, he led the entire state of New Jersey with 19 sacks as a senior. Uh, listen to these stats as his senior year in high school. 105 tackles, 28 tackles for loss, 19 sacks. Insane. In the first full year play of football, like just raw athleticism and kind of what he brings to the table. Joins Rutgers, uh, 2017 All-Academic Big Ten. 2017 Academic Excellence Award, the team's most elite scholar-athlete, uh, played in the Senior Bowl in 2018. 49ers love those guys. Um, and, you know, never really... Let's just be honest. He's never really come into his fold, um, his full potential. But he has carved out a niche or a role in the NFL, and that's a part-time pass rusher. That is what he brings to the table. Now, he ran a 4.65 40-yard dash, but he had good bend, really good bend. Um, this is my pre-draft write-up of him. And as I go through this, I'm going to throw on some film. Um, you know, I did this on Patreon. So if you want to watch the full breakdown with audio commentary, walking through all that stuff, uh, just go to patreon.com slash 49ers Rush Podcast or Google 49ers and Patreon were the first thing that pulls up um, several breakdowns of the entire free agent class, draft class, whatever else. So if, if you want to watch the full thing and pay attention to the film, that's there. And if you're Listen, audio-wise, that's okay. Um, you're not missing any of the content that we got. But if you want to check the video out and the breakdown, that's over on Patreon. Now, my pre-draft write-up of him, you know, um, talked about how he only played two years of high school. Very, very raw. Went back-to-back -back shoulder surgeries his junior year, which really hurt him. 
Um, and it did seem like he fully recovered from that. Athleticism was always there, but it's a lack of pass rush moves. He doesn't have the diversity. He, he's raw. And so he, he never had those three to four moves or counter moves, whatever. He either won early or he didn't win. Um, I said that he was a potential player, somebody could take a chance on, special teams. He blocked three kicks for the Rutgers. And so he's got a lot of potential, just hasn't been uncorked. Kind of a one-to-two trick pony guy. That's all that he's shown so far. Um, my player comparison was, uh, I'm going to pr- pronounce this name horribly wrong, uh, Kamali Correra, right out of Boise State. And I had a fourth to fifth round grade on him, but he went in the second round, number 52 overall. Um, and so, you know, if you look at what he did for the Colts, they drafted him in 2018. He came out only three starts in four years, which – is not good, but whenever you look at his pass rush efficiency, that's what jumps off the screen. He, I was pretty impressed going back through his film for the Colts against the run. It wasn't near as bad as I thought it was going to be, but he's a pass rush efficiency guy, meaning he doesn't need a lot of snaps, and he can still make his his presence known. So, you know, again, if, if just going through kind of what he did each year, his rookie year, Probably played the most, you know, played in 14 games, three starts, had four sacks, 13 quarterback hits. Next year, played in four games, got hurt, only had 91 snaps total. But he did have one and a half sack. Um, 2020, played in seven games. He had um, one sack, 115 snaps, got hurt again. Last year, 2021 for the Colts, which is the film I'm showing you now versus the Texans, 13 games, zero starts, five and a half sacks, Five tackles for loss, 225 snaps. And so if you average out kind of everything that he's done, he's played in 38 games, only three starts all his rookie year. He's not going to be starting for the 49ers under any situation. I don't care if, you know, two to three different defensive ends get hurt. This guy's not a starter in the NFL. That's not what he brings to the table. What he brings to the table is situational pass rushing depth, which is valuable to teams that love defensive ends, defensive line play. The Colts value defensive line play. The 49ers value defensive line play. So he's a fit in the sense of, hey, if you put a premium on this position, he's your guy. And, it, you know, you can go through and talk about teams starting defensive ends. That's fine. But whenever you get down to the fourth, fifth, sixth defensive end, that's what's going to tell you the depth and the how good a defensive unit is. And the 49ers have it better than anybody. So if we look at his career starts, or his stats, sorry, 38 games, three starts. He's got two forced fumbles, one fumble recovery, 12 sacks. Pretty dang good. 88 pressures, 22 solo tackles, 11 assisted tackles, seven tackle for loss, 29 quarterback for hits. So, it, you know, I went through, basically he averages... 22 pressures and four sacks a year. That's what he has been in a lot of limited time because, again, he's had injuries. That is an issue. And if you just look at his 2021 numbers last year for the Colts, he would have been sixth in pressures for the 49ers and fourth in sacks. Efficiency on a limited snap count. Uh, Again, he kind of averages about, you know, 20 snaps a game that that's his average and I think that could even go down for the 49ers you know somewhere around that 14 to 17 snaps a game so you've got somebody if you look at just training camp or sorry mini camp and OTAs he lined up almost exclusively with the second team um, at the right defensive end well Bosa wasn't there um, you know so that's going to kind of play into it but that's what he's going to be he's going to be that fourth or fifth defensive end that is just a pass rusher. So if you're in the Bravo group, he he's going to get some snaps there. You're bringing in the NASCAR package, probably not going to be one of the starters on there, but will be the first one off the bench to come in, you know, third, fourth quarter whenever people are tired and they're wanting to rush the passer. So there's going to be some games where you might not see him very much at all, five to six snaps. And then there's going to be some games where you're playing a very pass-heavy team where he's going to get 25 to 30 snaps. So he's a matchup player, but he gives the 49ers a lot of options and variables that they can kind of spice things up on defense because you're going to need those rushers. You're going to keep everybody fresh. And I think one of the people that are going to be most happy about this is Nick Bosa. 
You know, Nick Bosa is one of the best players in the NFL, but whenever he's, you know, near the top of defensive end snap percentage, that's not a good thing if you're trying to make a playoff run. This allows Nick Bosa to get a little bit more breathers and not be so dependent upon one player in the pass rush. Okay, so again, best projection, you know, I've got him. He's making the team. The contract says he's making the team. I think that there would be people, I think, you know, uh, Jordan Willis, uh, probably going to be behind him. You know, there's lots of different Alex Barrett's going to be behind him. But it always plays itself out. Injuries happen, whatever else. This dude's making the roster. I've got the over-under on his 2022 stats for the 49ers at four and a half sacks. So, like, if, if I was a betting man, that's where I would set the bar because I'm not sure he's going to get five, but I'm pretty sure he's going to get four, uh, if that makes sense. And that's that's all you need from him. He does not need to be a pro bowler. He does not need to be a starter. That's not what his role is going to be. His role is going to continue to put pressure on quarterbacks even if our backups are in. And that is something that very few teams, especially on the defensive line, can say. Um, so I love this. Now, I will say this. Most likely scenario is he plays a lot early. He's a veteran. 49ers love vets. But might lose out some playing time if Drake Jackson, the rookie, shows out. So plenty of snaps to go around. But how much he does play, eh, that's going to be up to you know how he can kind of hold on to that and kind of keep the rookie at bay. If he gets production early, man, you just slowly bring on Drake Jackson. You do not need to rush that. Um, and I hope that the 49ers are kind of smart with that. But that's Kamiko Ture. I like him a lot. Thank you, Anthony and Josh, the producers of this entire series. And, man, we are getting into some talent. We're at 47, and Kamiko Ture is at 47. That, that says a lot about this team. Depth, depth, depth. We're just going to keep counting them down.